Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we're here and this is going to be week number one of the UPL season seven and we're up against Gravy and his Vancouver Titans and this is going to be a really, really tough one. He is the reigning champion. So we're going to have a lot to think about, a lot to kind of do here, but overall I feel really good about the team and I'm just going to get right into team preview. I am incredibly nervous. Okay, so we will see the Kiram, Regirock, Aegislash, Blaziken, Togekiss, and Crocodile. So right off the bat, that means no Starmie, no Jolteon, no Starmie, no Jolteon. That, those are very interesting. Now, the Regirock interests me a ton, right? No Thwacky. No Thwacky is very, very interesting. No Araquanid. No Araquanid. Okay, 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 okay. What else? Um, The big ones here, Um, no Jolteon is notable. And no Araquanid is interesting. But I think I'm going to kind of stick with my plan. I really wanted to lead off with my torn because i think there are certain things that i can bait out here i think i can kind of deal big damage to the to the thing early and if i can get a ton of damage onto the reggie rock early then i think my chances of winning are pretty darn good my goal is to win with this vigavolt and i think this vigavolt is really well positioned to kind of do what it needs to do. I guess it's gonna be tough, but I think I see a strong path for my Vicavolt. I think my biggest short-term goal is going to be to really weaken down that Regirock, and then obviously I need to weaken down everything else, right? But everything else I feel more confident about, it's really going to be the, the, the Regirock and probably the Kyurem that I need to get down to under half, and then I feel really good about what Vicavolt's capable of. Um, but overall, overall i feel okay about this leads off with the crocodile as we lead off with this thing and i really honestly just want to go for a turn one so i do reveal to be not defiant which i probably should have been maybe i could have done some things with um done some things with a I, I could have scared this thing with a potential u-turn but overall i think i'm okay i think I, I i wouldn't be surprised to see to see turn one rocks i also wouldn't be surprised to see reggie rock come out immediately uh it's gonna depend on a decent amount here uh so let's see does withdraw do we see the reggie rock i don't know what that is it might be the right no it's this thing okay very interesting but we missed the very first hurricane of the season. Okay, okay. Um, that is something. I kind of just want to go for another one. I could also U-turn out. I don't want to get thunder waved, obviously. Uh, hmm. I could U-turn out. I could U-turn out, but then into what? Actually, I just U-turn out into Exeter every time, I think. I think that makes sense to me. I reveal to not be... Uh, I, I don't reveal my item. I, I'm not choiced. But, yeah, with no Jolteon, it, it frees up this thing a ton to kind of do whatever it needs to do. But overall, my biggest concern is getting up rocks. And I'm going to get air slashed on, but... Yeah, this is a very, very specially defensive Exodrill, and my biggest concern is going to be to to, to, to to get a Brox. This thing could stay in if it wants to, but uh, as long as I can get rocks up and keep them off, uh, keep them off of my side, um, and I can still put on pressure with this Exodrill onto this Togekiss, and I'm still in an okay position. I think obviously the, the, the Crocodile makes a ton of sense to want to come in here. But if, if nothing else, I think I just go back into... I could go back into Torn. I could... I could honestly go into... Um, go into... Weezing and try to get... And try to get up uh, Toxic Spikes as well. I think I might do that. I think I'm going to do that. We'll see. This is not going how I expected. I honest to God thought that I honest to God thought that I would be able to 
bait out the Regirock with a, a turn one, with a turn one thing, um, whatever the thing's called, um, Tornadoes. I'm very surprised that I wasn't able to bait it out, but overall, this is not looking bad for me. Not yet, at least. I guess we'll see what, whatever wants to come out. Uh, we do see the Aegis Lash. Okay. I think I want a will o -Wisp right away. I think I want a will o -Wisp right away. As we do get Toxic Spikes up. And now... This thing could be special. If it is... Um, judging by the way he brought it in like this, it's more likely than not to be special. But overall, just getting residual damage and being able to um, flamethrower on the following turn makes as much sense as, as anything else I could I could be doing right now. We will see the stance change. What do we see in terms of attacks? There's a shadow ball. Okay, that's fine. As long as we can wear this thing down over time, I'm not the most concerned about it. And yeah, we're just getting residual damage off. Uh, I don't. Uh, I probably should check if that reveals anything. I don't think that's specs, but yeah, that's almost definitely not specs, right? But I guess it's worth at least taking a look. Yeah, if it's a super aggressive spec shadow ball, that should have KO'd straight up. But it's some sort of mixed situation here. And it's fine. It, um, it, it's also fine because... Because I do get a little bit healthier, which means I might maybe be able to take a follow-up Shadow Ball. It might actually be no special attack invested. Yeah, how did Shadow Ball do, th do that little? I think that's no investment. Shadow Ball, potentially. If so, that's wild. But I'm very free to click Flamethrower. He could bring in the Blaziken, which would be unfortunate. But at the same time, I don't think that's the biggest deal in the world. I can start to chip Blaziken, potentially. I don't know. I don't know. Blaziken's gonna get poisoned either way. And come in on rocks, but... Yeah, getting this damage... This damage on Aegis Slash, absolutely huge. Absolutely huge. No matter what happens, this is huge. But yeah, by doing this... By letting me get a, a, an extra turn of, of Black Sludge... I potentially can take this. I don't take it, but... Uh, getting the, getting this thing more, more and more worn down means a whole ton for what this overall kind of um, texture of the game is going to look like. So let me think through a few things. I could go into this. It invites in the Crocodile. I could U-turn, assuming that. It, it Well, it also invites in the, the Regirock, to be fair. I could do this and click Sub. Let me see. Now that I know what kind of um, offense I'm looking at here, yeah, Shadow Ball breaks up, so it doesn't. It's not the biggest deal in the world. If I bring in the Excadrill, if I bring in the Excadrill, yeah, okay. I think this makes as much sense as anything else. I think it still makes sense to click U-turn. If no, if for no other reason, then um, there is the potential. I don't know. Does it make sense? I, I think it makes sense. I really, in my heart of hearts, thinks Reggie Rock wants to come in. And if the Reggie Rock comes in, what do I do? Uh, it, that looks like enough damage where by the end of the turn, we're starting to... Oh, it's a rocky helmet. We're, we're starting to, to, to threaten KOs with Grass Knot on its own. But I could also play it a little bit safer and do this. What's what's Regirock doing? If, if, if I can stay behind a sub, then that would be nuts. But is that a thing that is possible here? Uh, it doesn't look like it is, especially if it's body press, which it almost certainly would be. I think I do this. I have to threaten Grass Knot, and, and, and the Grass Knot is super telegraphed, but it's still necessary for me to do. And every indication is that... 
yeah, this is super telegraphed in a way that I don't like, but I think nothing wants to come in and then take a follow-up hurricane. So no matter what, I think this is workable. No matter what, I think this is workable. This kind of pressure that, that, that I'm putting on here um, makes a ton of sense to for for an endgame with my Vigavolt. Um, I think I have all the damage that I need. It's just going to be a matter of... Well, it's going to be a matter of getting a little bit of damage onto the Blaziken. Yeah, okay. That's fair. But I still really want to... Yeah, I think... I think if you're going to defog, you have to take this hurricane. I think if anything, um, the, the Kyurem is a little bit problematic because I do still need damage onto the Kyurem, but it's still not going to be the end of the world because um, maybe the better play would have been to U-turn out into the Vicavolt now. Maybe that would have been better. Or or U-turn out into... Uh, or U-turn out into... Back into the thing, um, in, uh, Cinderace. Maybe that would have been a better play. Uh, I do think that would have been a better play, now that I think about it. That was about 12 to 15% from Tornadus Grass Knot. Oh, this is reasonably offensive, it looks like. Oh, well, the default set is calm. Uh, we, get, we finally land a Hurricane, and it does, and that's a two-hit. That's definitely a two-hit. And it does look like, it does look like just straight up, just straight up, um, you turning out into Cinderace would have been a bad idea. But, yeah, this was the best case scenario, I think. I'm, I'm folding my arms like, like, uh, like Tornadus in inadvertently. But overall, I still think this puts, yeah, this puts on the most pressure. I really like the way that this match is, is kind of progressing. I think there's nothing wants to come in that would... Alright, well this is a little bit awkward, but I think... This Aegislash... Yes, yeah, this Aegislash should be just in range of a standard knockoff at this point. I don't have to... I don't have to risk anything at this point. Um, I could get... I could get... Shadow Snuck? But with this thing being burned, yeah, yeah, this is gonna be a shadow sneak. But with this thing being burned, I don't think it'll be the biggest deal in the world. Overall, um, getting this thing out of the way is huge. Getting this thing out of the way is huge. Tornado's first KO of the season. And again, nothing wants to be in against this tornadoes. And I, and to be fair, I, I maybe should have been uh, defiant looking back on it. But it doesn't matter because if the if the crocodile comes in, it's always gonna get hurricaned anyway. So. That's not the biggest concern in the world. Um, nothing wants to come in here. I mean, maybe the Kyurem, but if he lets me get da damage onto the Kyurem, then that's pretty bad for him, right? Like, nothing wants to deal with this Tornadus anymore. If anything but the Kyurem comes in, then the Tornadus just picks up a KO. Straight up. Oh, maybe not against the maybe not against the Crocodile, but pretty close. Pretty close. Is that the Kyurem? That's the Kyurem. There we go, baby. And he takes... Okay, okay, that's very interesting takes rocks damage okay that's very, very interesting i'm gonna click hurricane super duper quickly i could have clicked that quicker but i'm so interested as to what this good thing is gonna be it's not scarfed and we do land the hurricane that's everything we need that's everything we and we get the confusion okay that doesn't matter a whole ton but that's everything we need dragon dance okay all right buddy okay that's pretty bad for me. Um, that's pretty bad. But landing the hurricane matters a ton. Um, and actually, he can't. He can't uh, do anything past this turn. So I can click anything. Tornadus goes down, and then whatever wants to come in, Vigavolt can kind of go for game a little bit. Vigavolt can kind of go for game a little bit. Imagine landing, hit, hitting itself with confusion. Okay, thank. Okay, I'm, I'm honestly glad it, it didn't hit itself with confusion. But yeah, Tornadus put on every bit of pressure that I needed. That was fantastic by by Tornadus. Now if this thing goes down. This thing goes down. 
Is it worth going into Vicavolt now? What are my options here? I'd probably go into this thing. Yeah, I'm gonna do this. We'll see what happens. Togekiss could come in. Maybe he, maybe he wants to play for a Blaziken endgame. Um, but this deals with anything at this point. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, I can try to sub. Maybe this thing goes for rocks and I try to sub. Uh, Earthquake is probably... Yeah, Earthquake is just probably the better play every time. I don't think I do half, but... Make it close. Goes for rest. Okay. Okay. Well, if this thing is going for rest... Then how do I play this? If this thing goes for rest, how do I play this? This thing could be just rest curse. Uh, how do I play this? Uh, it's not even, it's not even a, a three KO, which sucks. But it is, but it is a, it is a four hit KO, which does mean that he does have to take the two turns of sleep and, and click rest on the wake up turn. So this does put, this does apply pressure still. The Shardagon still can apply pressure, and and if it makes contact with me, if, if it clicks body press and makes contact with me, then then it's taking a, a bit of rough skin. So this is still not the worst. This is still not the worst. I think honestly, yeah, goes yeah, gets another rest. It does suck that I'm slower. Like that's pretty bad for me overall. But I think the fact that this thing has to click rest means that maybe I go into Vigable now. Maybe I do this just to get some more offensive pressure on. I can start spamming Iron Heads. Yeah, I think this makes sense to me. This makes sense to me. This makes sense to me. Um... I don't think it ever makes sense for him to click body press. I think he always just wants to click rest here. Yeah, yeah, okay. But let's see. Reggie Rock. Uh, against Dredagon? It does look like it's pretty darn defensive. Which does mean that Excadrill... Excadrill is not, not putting on enough pressure, but it puts on maybe enough? I wish I put on more pressure, but it's put potentially putting on enough. Goes into this. Okay, 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 okay. This is still potentially pretty decent for me. And we'll get intimidated, but that's not the end of the world at all. It's not the end of the world at all. Because what's left? Let me just see um oh, it's still a little bit tough it's still a little bit tough um this still makes sense to me he's still not in a position where he can earthquake freely so he might go for stone age again he might pull some crazy doubles i don't know I have the upper hand, but it's super fragile right now. And it's it's super slight and it's super fragile. It does go for straight up earthquake. Okay, that's fair. Not quite a two hit, especially after lefties. I think I have to pull double assuming that the Togekiss would want to come in. Or I click rock slide. Hmm. I could just click Rock Slide. Or I make the super aggressive play into Vicavol. I think I do that. I think I do that every time. Or I make this a super aggressive play. But no, I think this makes more sense to me. 
I think this makes more sense to me. I think it's time for Vicable. I think it's time for Vicable. I mean, this could also be Res for all I know, right? Didn't switch out. Scale Shot, okay. That's problematic. That's problematic. I probably don't take a Stone Edge, though. Which is awkward. Huh. I might have to go back into... I could play games a little bit here. But Crocodile at plus one is really scary, actually. Crocodile plus one is super duper scary. I think I have to make some sort of a play here. Because I really don't want to lose to this. Obviously, I think it's I think it's I think the most likely scenario is just going for a, a, a blaze again end game, but there's so many things in, in the way of that. There's so many things that I have to get through before it can even get to that point. That uh, this is really tough for me at the moment. I don't think this is crocodile. Do we take one earthquake? No, we don't. Uh, I probably just do this, and then the crocodile goes down on the following turn. And he can't come back in on rocks um, for much longer. So yeah, I think he's just taking this as his opportunity. There's for another stone edge. That's fair. That's fair. Well, I think I also want to keep this around just just for just for the rough skin spam. So I think I'm gonna do this just in case I have to take one flare blitz to to the face, and I can switch in um, the Dorticon. There's the earthquake. Okay, that's fair. Now, I think I have to go into, into Dorticon to prevent the Blaziken from just, like, sword dancing in my face. Because then I lose. Then I lose. Um, I suppose I glare every time, right? I could Earthquake to, just to break subs, but I think glaring is a better play, potentially. Togekiss is a safe play. I think he could just go for game right now with Blaziken, and I think it makes a ton of sense. Um. Yeah, okay. Okay. This is fine. If he tries to defog in order to open the door for Blaziken, then I can glare here. And I can go for game myself with, uh, with Ficklevolt. Oh my god. No heckin' shot, dude. No way. That's one HP in a dream. That's one HP in a dream. Now we get to try and pair a flinch. Do we get a pair of flinch? No, of course not. Of course not. But... This does mean we can kind of go for it now. Actually, wait. Everything is down except for Blaziken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to be this way. We have to at least go for it with Vicavolt a little bit. We have to at least go for it a little bit with Vicavolt. Um, I think all that's left is the Crocodile, Blaziken, and the... and this thing. So we'll see. Oh, boys, years. Okay. Well, it's kind of how I needed it to go. 
But now, I, okay, so in prep, I really struggled with this because I really wanted this thing to be heavy duty boots, like desperately wanted this thing to be heavy duty boots. But I ran some calcs and there were some calcs where I really needed to be max special attack modest with magnet in order to ensure some KOs. One of those was Blaziken. Um, it might not even matter because because it might be the case that that um that Blaziken is not boots itself and it gets affected by by rocks and webs, but or, or it could just be like a little bit bulkier than, than I expected it to be. But I but I through the kitchen sink of this I I I made this thing modest uh, magnet just to be able to to have a 69% chance to KO a no bulk Blaziken. So we'll see how that works out for me, uh, and see if we make it out of here. But if this thing, if this thing, yeah, takes rocks, then it's moot anyway. This thing could be scarfed. I just, oh, it's air balloon. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. It's air balloon. So it is a little bit moot, but uh, this should be a hundred percent after rocks, unless this thing is just super bulky. And I believe the the last thing in the back is crocodile, and uh, from there. We can take week one. There we go. There we go. Can we take week one? Now, it would have been super unfortunate if something were to happen and, I, and for whatever reason, I, di I didn't take that air slash. Oh, this thing. I completely forgot. This is what's left. Okay. Now, I should be able to 2 KO this thing. Um, I hopefully don't get... Um, I hopefully don't get, like, stone-edged on, on, the, on the rest. On, on the sleep talk, but yeah, that should be enough damage where where Cinderace always cleans up. But I'm just hoping that I don't get stone edged. I'd, I'd prefer to oh, I'd prefer Vigable to to do to to get these KOs. It does, and uh, that's gonna be week one. Uh, I really really wanted to to win with Vigable. I think Vigable gave me the best chance of, I had possible of winning this one. Um, but it was overall incredibly, incredibly scary. And like I said, I I was never, I, I was never, I was always uneasy about this matchup because I didn't know what it would be like having to run such an aggressive Vika Vault without boots, and that had to be like modest magnet just to ensure KOs against like a boots or Araquanid or something like that. It was just really, really scary overall. Um, I could have lost it 100%, right? I could have lost it to Kiram. I could have misplayed against Blaziken, right? If, if if Blaziken was like dual lands, and obviously that would have been awful. And if I gave if I gave Blaziken like an extra turn or two, where it could get itself situated before I could really respond, then that would have been brutal, right? I ran a Cinderace that was banded and not boots, right? Like that on its own was risky. I was risking a lot against against those Reggie Rock turns, right? Um, and I always knew that Reggie Rock was going to be kind of the key for for me to win this, like weakening that that, that Reggie Rock. But I don't know. At this point, I'm, I'm kind of rambling a little bit. Uh, it was a really tough game. GG to Gray. It was a really, really fantastically played game. Appreciate the game, but that'll be week one. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the UBL as well as more weeks of other things to come. But once again, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, out.